and we're live. Welcome back to the MongoDB Twitch stream. Uh, so this is going to be an exciting episode with repeat guests. So this is uh, Marcus Egan's second time, I believe, on the Twitch stream, and Karen's like a millionth time. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> But uh, before we get into uh, the core material of uh, Atlas Search and some of the operators, I want to go over some logistic stuff. So we are live. We uh, want you to engage with us in the chat. We're going to field some questions. We're going to engage with you. It's going to be wonderful. Um, if you notice that there's any kind of video or audio issues, or maybe the font's too small on Karen's screen, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll correct that. But other than that, we have some fun stuff going on today. So and the trolling um, has started. Yep, the trolling has started. <laughs> He's unleashed the hounds. <laughs> um, I think uh, this is a good opportunity for. Uh, we'll start with Marcus to introduce yourself to the new viewers. Hi, uh, my name is Marcus Egan, uh, Marcus for Peace on Twitter, as you can see, and uh, I am the Atlas Search product manager, and I'm also a contributor to the Apache Lucene Solar Project. Uh, I'm really passionate about search, inferring user intent, and, and helping people find what they're looking for. And MongoDB Atlas Search is an awesome way for you to do that and allow you to build really robust applications for search on top of the database that you're already using. So. <laughs> awesome. He's learned to speak. He's learned. <laughs> So my name is Karen uh, Yule May, and I am a developer advocate here at MongoDB. I've been here about three years, but I started off as a solution architect. So I used to have to work with customers. And Atlas Search is actually really cool because I would often have to talk to customers about how they could get a better search implementation inside of their MongoDB data. And so uh, I've, I've worked with search products since, since we announced it, and uh, it just gets... It, and then I had to kind of go back this week and try some old stuff, and this and I, it just makes it way easier. So I'm really excited about this particular stream. Awesome. So Marcus, Karen, what's what's the topic today? So the 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 topic is uh, going to be about the the different ways you can build uh, a search experience and the benefits of of dollar search and the aggregation framework. So if you if you can see my screen. Uh, let me uh, put that up now. Oops, there we go. If you can, if you can see my screen, you'll see the, this regex, uh, regex is a common filtering mechanism uh, as, as an operator used within match queries, dollar match queries, and dollar text is uh, another that people often use with dollar match. But, from a user experience perspective, there there are a lot more features that you can offer if you use dollar search. If you have a long text field, uh, you can highlight the relevant term, the relevant terms in the document corresponding to a query. But for our, our restaurant app, we're going to highlight uh, key features like uh, fuzzy matching, which means if there's a typo, which there are often typos, uh, we're also going to highlight autocomplete, and we're also going to highlight uh, geo, some of the GeoJSON capabilities. And so you can get a sense of what this query looks like based on this screen. Actually, here, just so. we should probably just start with the data. Um, if, if you don't mind, can, can I just, uh, so we have, I, I don't want to like talk over you, um, but, but just because like as a dev, you always kind of start with the data. So Nick, I'm going to, oops, sorry, Nick, can you? <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. I'll, okay, thank I'll you very much. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you have an Atlas cluster and they're free, you can get you can get it for any level for free, and you could download the sample data. So, if you see here, we have all this these sample data sets, and so if we start here, we have there's sample restaurants data collection here, which has a ton of restaurants, mostly in the New York area, and so this is the data that that um, Marcus is talking about, where you have the name of the restaurant and uh, the scores that people have and the cuisine and the borough. And you even have um, the geolocation of it. You have the latitude and longitude of it. So when we started with search, we just had searching for text. And so I was, we did like a movie demo where you could look for movies by face and name, but now we could, you know, search for coordinates. So like 
you know, Uber and, and Yelp and all those things where you have to do search on GeoJSON data. So that's really, really exciting. But we start with this data set that, that everybody has access to. And we built like this application that Marcus is going to show you. Okay, that's all I have to say. Can, uh, <laughs> can, can I interrupt now? I'd like to actually yeah. take a step back. And um, can you, from a very high level one of you, talk about what, what does it mean to search on GeoJSON? Uh, like, what, what value does that add? Uh, Marcus, we lost your, your audio. Yeah, there, okay, there are there two ways go. people, there are two ways people primarily search uh, with GeoJSON. And, and one of those ways is filtering. It's like you don't want results to show up unless they are within the range of that you've specified. And so that's that's a common use case. Another common use case is and probably more important use case, especially for our app, which can I tell you a story about shortly is like you want the location to influence the score the relevancy score because if you're searching for a restaurant and you're not driving and you've got to carry your skates you don't want to have to go <laughs> too far so even if you type in the name of a restaurant that you want to go to if it's three miles away and it's cold outside the search engine can still suggest to you another restaurant that's uh, the same cuisine or has a similar name maybe suggesting that it could be similar. Awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, so, so yeah. anybody who uses Yelp, anybody who uses Uber, anybody who uses any of these things, you, Google Maps, like you've had a search through GeoJSON data. So, and this is what they use. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So, so right I'll now let we're sharing you go Karen's back screen. Uh, should I switch well, we back can... to Marcus? Uh, sure. If, Karen, would you like to explain what's going on, what's going to happen when I share my screen? Like, where is everyone at? What are they trying to do? Yeah. So, so if we go back to the data real quick, um, yeah, I'll, I'll stay here. So if we go back to the data real quick, um, there are things that we have to do. Marcus is going to walk you through different things that we have to do in order to query this data with dollar search. In the past, you might've had to use dollar text or dollar regex. Um, but with the dollar search operator, which is just another operator inside our aggregation framework, and we'll show you how to build up some of these queries in a second here and actually build some up live. Um, uh, if you when you build up these queries, there are some things you have to do to to get it started. You'll have to index it so that your server will know what fields to look at and what type of data it's going to expect to find. And so Mark is going to show you some index that we created. And you had to do that for dollar text anyway. You had to create some text indexes on some fields. And then he's going to show you some aggregation pipeline stages that we have. And I can actually show it to you inside of Compass really quick. But maybe we should. Um, we should we, start with maybe, the ap application. Yeah, you, you start with the application. We'll share Marcus's screen and he'll go to the application. Yep. Cool. So. Oh, he, we just lost his screen. <laughs> no, it, it's coming. It's coming. I'm moving to entire screen. Uh, oh, uh, application window. So are you ready? Can yeah. you see my... You got it. So I I like sushi. Uh, and But as I alluded to, we don't want to walk too far from Central Park. I mean, from... Actually, if you if you go ahead and reset the button, just refresh it really quickly. So um, when I when we were just thank you. So that yellow pin, I put that if you scroll in on it, I put that pin at the ice skating rink in Central Park because you could feed it in the ice skating rink so anywhere you want. I got latitude and longitude for that. So I was imagining me, Nick and Marcus. <laughs> ice skating at central park and we we're like let's go have a hot dog well nick wants a hot dog marcus wants sushi and i want french food so this I'd is go the... for a new york hot dog <laughs> i know you would nick <laughs> so let's... that's the point but but this is the center of all our searches where that yellow pin is so let me try to find a hot dog Nathan Todd. Ones in New York are the best. I don't I don't get that over here in California. 
Okay, so so if you scroll out, maybe you can. Uh, so nothing yeah. super close. Okay, ah, you, there's do, a hot do, dog. So if you scroll down on the screen, on right. the whole application screen, you could see all the results in that result box. So those should show up. But yeah. So anyway, so that's a simple dollar text search, and he'll show you the aggregation for the operators that we use for it. But then if you click so, on any of those, you could see. You can see here that the the hot kitchen is the closest, but the closest hot dog, or I guess maybe they have hot dogs. Barking dog wants that because it has dog in it. These two are, this one's going to be a, a higher up rating. So dog is going to be less frequent in the name of a restaurant than hot. And that sort of gets at how, how we hope things to be, we hope that the results will be influenced. Now let's check dollar regex and see what happens. No results. So it's a lot faster than dollar text, but no That's results. That's weird. Yeah. So let me check dollar search. And then dollar search will show you the most relevant results. You're looking for a hot dog. There's a hot dog. It's not far away. And there's not, none of this, none of the other less relevant results, the barking dog kitchenette. And then but what about the type, like typing in the experience? So let's let's start again from text, and let's look for sushi. Uh, it should work. It's a clear match. It's a direct, exact match. So there's no typos. You can see there's some sushi that's closer. Uh, East 52nd. It looks farther away. It's actually not that far. And then East 54th. That's pretty good. But I must take a look at the ones in the back. And even if you switch this to regex, if I type it in, let's see, and then click again, it shows up. But uh oh, let's see. Yeah, I a lot of sushi at that time for the for dollar regex, but. If you know what sushi that you're looking for, uh, if you already, this might be confusing all these restaurants. Uh, here we go. So there's sushi and there's the relevant restaurants that are nearby and not a whole lot of mistakes. Let's actually try if I made a mistake. Oh, look at all those suggestions. So this actually makes mistakes a lot less frequent. I, I have all these I can pick from. And, so I have a question for you, Marcus. For. Go ahead. In that in that list for the autocomplete, um, is there is there a limit to how many number of results come back, or did you set a limit? So you can set a limit, and I believe that the limit for autocomplete here is twenty one. So we're limiting the search the search results to 12 but in the suggested and in, in the autocomplete we allow for 21 results so there should be 21 results let's see if we can so it's 21 them. results by the way i i i wrote the app so i'm sure it's crazy buggy <laughs> <laughs> and i wrote the endpoint so if anything goes wrong it's not them it's me but the 21 results for the for the autocomplete will show up in that on uh, that on that menu, and then twelve results will show up on the screen. That's right. And do we do we know if these uh, results in the autocomplete are they sorted by the the score that they receive based on the match, or something else? They are sorted by the score yep. they receive in the match. That's right. Got it. So, so if we sorry type, to <laughs> it's okay. So let's say we're just learning how to write. We're young, but we know how to use the iPad. And our parents say, what do you want, sushi? And then they look up sushi. <laughs> Let's see what happens if you search for it. The same results appear. The fuzzy, the fuzzy options.
for dollar search allow you to do that. And the user input frequently has typos. We're just humans. We make mistakes. But if you type sushi for dollar text, you're going to be a little hungry. <laughs> so there's no sushi anywhere around. <laughs> no sushi. I wonder if you could make it slushy. But anyway. Yeah. Oh, slushy would be interesting. <laughs> no, yeah, it was not. <laughs> I'm going to test that. Oh. And so, so would the dollar go ahead? I was going to say earlier you had mentioned uh, fuzzy and that it leaves uh, margin for uh, typos. Uh, is there a reason why text, are we not setting up text right now to accommodate typos? So text won't be able to handle some of the, some of the rewrites that happen in Atlas search, some of the optimizations that we have to, to support, to support handling fuzzy matching. So any, Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say with regex, and I hadn't touched regex in a while since we've come out with search, but I went back to it and there are ways to handle typos in regex, but you've got to, you got to kind of anticipate them. You've got to kind of anticipate what people might miss. And then you have so many different characters inside your, with the slash and the uppercase and the different options and the whatever that, you know, regex command is easy enough. But that thing, the value after it is like, that's like a different language that so you have to learn. And anytime you write another uh, thing, you have to kind of relearn. And it can look like just all sorts of different characters before you even get to the word. The character would say anything where this starts at the beginning or anything where this, you could put in a dot. So anything, anything in between. So it's kind of like its own little language inside of it. And that's one of the that's the other reason why dollar search is, is great, because you could handle these things so easily and not actually have to kind of relearn how to write dollar regexes anyway. Yeah. So and, I, I put a question up on the screen, too, um, mm -hmm. re yeah, regarding what, this. Would Sui Sushi using the regex variant work? Let's let's try it out. So it probably won't. Uh, because. Unless, unless you know of a place called Sui Sushi, let me just <laughs> check that again. Uh, Sui, <laughs> not I. I believe there's a period in there as well. Yeah. But, but Jonas, if you're asking, like, if I put in the if you're meeting the period for like a kind of wild card, like how many characters are in between, I think that's something I have to put on the, my, um, on my ag on my aggregation for dollar regex, not here within the interface. Well, take a look at. Take a look at this one. So this Did works. Work? Mm -hmm. Can you scroll up so we could see the search results? Uh, not on the yep. map, but on definitely, the. Definitely. Yeah. So it shows one sushi place for sure, maybe three, but definitely one. And these are Japanese places. So they're pretty close. But if we try the same query uh, for dollar search, what happens? Maybe. A lot more sushi restaurants. And so, and it's faster. So when you, when you have like a wild card, like maybe dot star, you're adding greedy quantifiers to your, to your, like to your query plan. And that can make queries take a lot longer. It can result. And a collection scan if you haven't created an index and you can cause a lot of problems relying on dollar regex in that case whereas for for search and this gets in the weeds a bit uh, lucene creates um, a term query automaton so there's like a definite state automaton that allows you to point to like map this query to terms in a dictionary that appear in the result set. So it's, I mean, it's going to be a lot faster. We can go deeper and deeper into definite state automaton. I don't want to definite state automaton, <laughs> but you know, it's a lot faster. What was the so, thing you said earlier about greedy? Greedy gre quantifiers. Greedy quantifiers. Yeah, I, I actually had never heard of that. So maybe you want to elaborate on what that means. I was going to ask. So, yeah. I'm going to make it my new Twitter handle. <laughs> greedy, yeah, quantifiers. So, <laughs> greedy quantifiers. It means like, 
you're looking at a lot like you you're looking at a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff matches like many things so basically if you have a dot dot star that's like everything and everything that comes before it is a match so it's like you're constantly matching against all these evaluated terms all these patterns just repeatedly like it's just a pattern matching uh, stage that matches everything. So you're getting greedy. And, and when I first learned about them, I, I think I was told fat quantifiers, but I think greedy is better. Because <laughs> they will get fat because they get they get full of memory because they take up so many, they accept everything. They just eat everything that's coming. They quantify yeah. everything that's coming. So, so there was another question. Nick, did you see any other questions? Oh, uh, there was. I think Karen answered it in the chat, but let's go ahead and, and answer it on the stream too for people who are catching it on demand. You saw the screen you read it out. Oh, great. So, so, for so, so if great. you're missing kind of the whole point of the stream is like if you're starting your search stuff, if you're starting an application where you want to do search, whether it's for words or for dates or for GeoJSON or anything, you should use dollar search if you're new to mongodb you should use dollar search and you can get started for free what we're trying to show you today is like if you have something on dollar text or if you have something on dollar regex why you might want to move over to dollar search uh so you should why you should pick dollar search over them and if you have them why you want might want to move over to make the experience better for your users so don't think we're pushing dollar regex on you because we're not. No, definitely not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not going to be as efficient. It's not going to give you the same features. So you're not going to get this autocomplete list, which I love, because if I was typing s dot u, and I put the period, I'm still getting this this sushi, and it's still directing me to it. So it's like, oh, I have a period, but it doesn't matter. I can just go to sushi suki yorker, and then see the search results so and i've zoomed in too much and i probably should refresh <laughs> <laughs> it could be my app though <laughs> you're so nice <gasps> uh yes yeah, so susie susie yorker and it shows it and it's pretty great so yeah so i have it if you if you pick something from autocomplete you get that nifty pop-up or something so you could see like if it's something you specifically picked but that's that was a that was just a line of code i didn't actually write too much stuff for that but i still like that <laughs> i still thought it was kind of fun to implement and can you see this susia yeah okay great so what one area where i think it's really strong is something simple you're on your phone you're running for breakfast and you, the keys are tiny and fingers are big. So you, you type. Actually, you should close that. I didn't, I didn't. Thank you. Yeah, so, because so, you're cold and you're shaking. So you can't type in bagel. Yeah, I can't type in bagel. <laughs> you can only get bagel out. You're going to go <laughs> hungry and stay cold. And if you have dollar regex, you're still going to go cold. <laughs> Actually, I uh, I might have messed up the endpoint to tell you the truth because no, no, I was messing with it before. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. So if but if you have bagel and you type search, you're still going to get the bagels. And there's a, a bagel really close to you. So <laughs> this is, you know, I think this is a really powerful feature because people's hands are cold and they're bigger than the tiny buttons. And if you have a lot of users on mobile, like most people then it's especially important or if you can't afford zero results because this is not going to work for hungry hangry cold marcus cold people when wearing I, mittens yeah cold <laughs> people wearing mittens it's great so I, so I don't think we brushed upon this yet but i feel like i now might be a time to ask uh what what about if uh we're not um Maybe English as as the as the search language, or maybe restaurants are, are not uh, in English. Um, how does how does search work in the in those circumstances? So that's a great question. And in a in a city like New York City, it's a world city with people from all over the place. 
you can be sure that there are some places where the name of a restaurant's not in English. So it's really about, at that point, about understanding your collection, your corpus, and, and what languages the, the, the restaurants appear in. And because it's Lucene, we can use the Lucene at the core, we can use the standard analyzer, which is language agnostic uh, and works across pretty much every language. Some autocompletes won't work as well, like, uh, but with, with uh, the standard analyzer, but most autocompletes will. Have. And if you're using the, alpha, the same alphabet that we use, uh, then it should be fine. It's, it's left to right and has white spaces. You, 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 was, you can still get autocomplete, but with the other languages that are, you know, uh, not white space or right to left, but you have to use ngram rather than edgegram for your tokenization. That that was actually something I had a lot of fun playing with. So uh, we we have support for over thirty languages. So you could set your analyzers to different languages. And what that'll do is it's not particularly relevant to this data set. But what it'll do is if you're looking through body of text and like French or whatever, it's going to return. It's going to remove common stop words in that language, like the ands and the these and the a's and stuff like that. So but the interesting thing here that I found out while doing this application is that for the autocomplete index, it removes um, the di it collapses the di the diacritics is that right so that like usually yep. when you're typing in something and you want it to autocomplete you don't have to worry about putting in accents and stuff like that because it's just going to like just say yeah you don't need an accent which is basically how i write in every foreign language i just skip the accents and <laughs> so. you you mentioned uh mgram and edgegram is it worth uh, elaborating just a uh, high level on on the difference between those other than uh left to right uh, right to left kind of stuff. Sure. So, so, yeah. So, depending on the the, the language that you're using, it it will handle uh -oh. segment. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear yeah. you. I'm just laughing at Karen because now she looks like she's ready to defend the the wall in the north. Oh, that's great. <laughs> with their own style i think somebody's <laughs> watching me and saw that i was shivering <laughs> so, so there's a that's great i didn't even notice this there's, there's a i noticed that you were cold i didn't notice that someone came and rescued you so it's cold outside so there's a the the really important thing to elaborate on is for for edge gram versus ingram is like if you're using edgegram autocomplete for those languages that are right to left or where there's no white space is very difficult to do because it's hard to do segmentation uh, with that tokenization strategy. So ngram is a little more flexible and for that reason more memory intensive, but it, allow, it will allow you to, to segment in a different manner, like maybe it's one character, two characters, sometimes four characters, and also right to left. Got it. And, Perfect. Thanks. And yep, and it it's not like it's not necessarily worried about white space because there's no white space. <laughs> and you can think of ingram as like continuum, and, and yeah. edgegram is going forward. <laughs> Perfect. So, so. Um, yeah. So the so this is this is a way of tokenizing, right? Or we're, we're talking tokenizing. So your analyzers yeah, right. will take the text that you feed in for your input, anything we type in that search bar, and the analyzer that you set on your index will take that text and break it down into tokens, and that's um, what we feed into Lucene in order to get these results back. Should so, I show some like should I, should we show some of the the code? The indexes? Well, I mean, we could show like the index definitions, and I can show them inside of Atlas if you wanted uh, to. I, I so. think that would be great. I think okay. I Karen, if you, you could to show them. Like... Yeah. Perfect. So this is um, 
this is Atlas. <laughs> this is, I, I hope the font's big enough for you, Nick. Uh, this is my restaurant's collection. Uh, one thing I had to do, actually, I should, I should tell you this. So before we created, um, before we create, I used the data in dollar search. If you see here, I have, uh, that my location is a coordinate. Uh, in dollar search, you actually need your location to be an object with your type points. And let me show you what, what I mean by that. Um, actually, let me, let me just go here to show you what I mean by that, because this is actually the, the database I use. So here I have location set as an object with type point and then my coordinates are underneath it. So this is actually an interesting uh, thing that I had to do that we all have to do when we work with data. Sometimes we get data and it's not exactly in the format we need to. So <clears throat> I used, excuse me, I used inside of, so this is Compass, by the way. So a lot of times when I program, I, I go into Compass and, and create this. So I have a, uh, let me see, open save pipeline. Kara, we had a message saying that your font wasn't large enough on the previous screen. Nuh uh, nuh uh. <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> Jonas, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Okay, Jonas, let, let me know, but I can't even believe it. I, see, ev see, every time somebody, I do this on a stream, I forget if it's control or option or command, and then I hit the wrong one and I shut down the entire broadcast. <laughs> so, so I use an aggregation, by the way. So I, I'm super, this is not a stream about the aggregation pipeline builder and compass, but I feel like I should, I talk about it every stream I have. But so this is the data I have from my restaurants collection. <clears throat> I use the um, add fields operator here. So this is a cool little, let me, uh, actually, let me grab this and I'll just go back to the beginning. Control C. Uh, let me go back to new pipeline. From, oops, sorry. I'm just going to do new pipeline. That's fine. So this is the data that we have, and you can see like the preview panel. But the nice thing about this is that I can do, uh, I can create, I can aggregate things here and just paste things in, and I can see if it's changing the data. So now I've created a new field, and I've added that type point in there, and then I just took here from address coordinates, I just took that and I wrote that into location coordinate. So this is how I'm transforming the data to put it. Usually I look at these things. I'm like, oh, I have to change the data. And I just kind of give up on it. But uh, but uh, I don't have to do that here. And the nice thing is, is we have this nifty preview panel that I can see if this actually works and I get what I want to. And I do get what I want to. And the other nice thing is, here's the other thing that I think is kind of interesting. When I work with data, I'm always afraid of messing up the database. So I don't want to do so I can do a dollar out and I could just write it in a new collection if I wanted to. So I'm going to write it in collect. I'm going to name this collection after Marcus. So you can do dollar out to write in a new collection or I can write it over the collection that I have, uh, which will take away the original uh, location. Um, or I can dollar merge into a collection yeah. that I already have and then I have. It. So I'm just going to do this. Save documents. Hopefully I won't mess it up. And then um, let me go back here, refresh this. I'm I'm getting distracted, but the, but it was so. Here you see, I have Marcus here, but I, I didn't actually use Marcus for this <laughs> for this thing. So anyway, that's I actually so I used it and I created this collection called uh, Restaurants Location Point, and I had to create indexes um, when I created to use the dollar text. And to use the GeoJSON data in regex, I had to create these two. But again, this isn't a talk about that. But to create a search index, anything I do in dollar search, I had to create indexes off of here. Uh, the default index, if I wanted to create a new index, it would, by default, uh, map all the fields for all the text that you have in there. So as you're constantly adding new data or you're adding new fields, it will go ahead and sort of add that to your index as well. I don't, I don't need to do that though. Um, for dollar search point, so um, 
I have that uh, I don't have dynamic mapping. I have static mapping, which is more performance. And this is really helpful when you have like tons and tons of fields if you only want to index certain fields. But you have to do this if you have any geo GeoJSON data or you have um, or you do autocomplete. You'll definitely have to create a different search index for that. But here you could see in this, I'm using the standard leucine analyzer on the field for cuisine. I'm using a standard leucine analyzer on the string field of name, the name of the restaurant, and location field is geo. So I have to set this up for my normal search indexes. Hey, Karen, can we uh, zoom in a bit on that screen? Are you serious? I'm sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd be delighted to. <laughs> I need to. And then, and then I use a different index for autocomplete and we'll show you how we use the indexes but in the autocomplete one again just for performance reasons i went ahead and set mappings to false but i could set it to true and then i could just have the wind index but in here for the autocomplete the only thing i used it for was to build out the fields uh, in the display to show up underneath so the only field i put in for autocomplete is um, the name and then this is how i set it up so you see i have tokenization Edge Graham, but I can set that according to whatever Marcus tells me to. And I have to say that this field, I'm using it as an autocomplete index here with that. Um, so once I have those indexes, you see, let me go back to where now I forget if I, yeah, 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 yeah right. <clears throat> so once I have those indexes, I'm going to go back to the aggregation. Let's see what fields I have open. Um, Bossy Nick, what is that one? <laughs> that is a, that, that's for you, Nick. Um, <laughs> oh, shoot, did I, I, I think I overwrote wrote my, my fuzzy matching ones, but let's go ahead and, and uh, open this one. For, mm, I don't really like that one. Let's do AC Thursday in pipeline. So again, I use this to build up all of my, all of my, um, commands in it, uh, but if I didn't, I can start. So you see inside the aggregation pipeline, we use dollar search. <laughs> uh, I can't make it big enough so you could see it on your phone, <laughs> by the way. Uh, I use dollar search has to be like the first stage inside of an aggregation pipeline. This is actually kind of complicated. If I wanted to, I can make it really easy and I could just say, look for, I could just have this, I can just have Look for the, and then I have here Italian, look for any like Italian words or whatever inside of the fields, name and cuisine. And then fuzzy is what Marcus was talking about when we misspell things or whatever. So I say uh, two because I think I misspell things a lot, but I can say one if you want to kind of get, if you have the larger number there, you're going to get more results that are more random. But if you smaller numbers you have, you're going to get more precise results. But because I'm using this, this text operator, which is a very easy text operator, along with the geolocation, because I'm querying across both things inside search, I just combine these within a, a compound operator. So inside my search text, I, I list the index that I just created that I need to use. And then I use, I could have a very simple uh, field here. In fact, let's start with some, and then I, and then I just, um, so I did all that. I did project because this is the, the fields that my application is expecting to use. And then I limited it. Uh, I limited it to 12. This is, this is probably just one I have, but limit is really important because dollar search is going to go across all of your data and give a score to all the data. And the first things you find are the best matches, which means they get the highest scores. But speed is really important in search. So we really want to limit that. So we get, once we get the first 12 or the first 21 or the first three, whatever we limit it to, then it stops calculating the stuff from that. So that's important to see. Um, so. Uh, Kara, do you mind, do you, before you continue on, do you mind showing here in this preview the score field? The score field? Um, yes. So, so I would yeah, do, I can send you the, oh, actually, you know what, this, this was a, this one I, this one I, I don't actually want here, but I, I'll take this out because I don't want it. Uh, da, 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 control X. 
Well, but so yeah, you, okay. And the project. The dollar project. And the project. And I do, what is it? It's score. Score. Uh, so. Nick, do you, you remember? Comma, I, it, Are you talking score, about uh, colon. Yeah, meta score? Yep, meta score. And they'd be and dollar search, meta colon. Search highlights? No, no we're doing text, score. So, oh, you're just doing then score. Then text score. So if you a string text score, this would be a string now. That's the only difference. But and that's it, just going to, yep. I always have to look this up when I write. No. <laughs> um, so let me put a comma here. Oh. Yeah, comma. It should work after there that. There you go. And then, actually, why do I not see score here? Da, 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 oh, let me... Let's see. Um. I feel like I was so, supposed to put it in so the top. So search no? score. So if you do search score. Here? Okay. S-E-A-R. Yeah. Search score. No, 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 no. no, no. Instead of text. Instead of text score. Oh, okay. Oh, right. And is it still a string? Yep. All right. I never remember this stuff either. Oh. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, this is <laughs> so you can see here that we get the the best matches have the highest scores, and then yeah. as we go on, that this score number will get lower and lower, and lower. But these and, are all very average results. So, and, what, and uh, so I was going to say, what is the high that it could be? The highest that the score could so be. So the highest that the score could be is known as the theoretical maximum, and that varies from query to query. It's like Actually, you could. Go ahead. So yeah, there there's some like you. Sometimes you'll see the highest score is point zero eight, and then other yeah. times, like if you have like these boosts. So previously, Karen had a boost in her query. Uh, I don't know what it was again. Yeah, exactly, it was two hundred or twenty. Yeah, we could go ahead and we can go ahead and play with that if you guys if you guys want, where we can sort of yeah, let's do it. Uh, but let me let me just show one tiny other thing. So I did. Um, so here we are. So I wrote all this and how do I get it inside of some place I can use? Um, I can come here inside. So Marcus and I. So he he likes Python and I'm kind of I like Python, but I actually kind of I'm, I'm more proficient in Node and JavaScript. So so you can export the language with that button here. I built up that thing and I can like put it in any language I want. I can use the import statements. Um, so if Marcus, if I, if Marcus and I, we share this pipeline as text, like we share the file, then I'm like, here, Marcus, you can have, and I will send him, I will send him this. This, this will copy it, and then I can just put in text file. But me, I can grab yep. it, node, uh, node. Let me grab this. Let me take that out because I don't want it. So that that reminds me of. Uh... Something so one of our team members wanted us to cover, which is that you know search is newly in production. You know it was in beta. Atlas Search was in beta from last summer until this year in June, and in June we it went from beta to being production ready, supported uh, for a number of customers, and sometime late last year in November, someone built a restaurant finder using dollar regex. And while it's it's not technically wrong, it's not optimal, right? Given autocomplete and fuzzy matching uh, and some of the other features like highlighting, which may not be as germane for, for, for this, this particular use case, but that person used dollar regex. And when I found that document, it was a Python document, about a Python mm -hmm. application, and I converted it to use Atlas Search. And so uh, Karen and I have been collaborating on it, but we thank that person in the community who built the restaurant finder on Dollar Regex. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, it's, a really, you, it's a really clever idea, so clever comparison. Like, I like for people to, to try it out. And you can export into your language of choice, whether it's Node or Python or, or C Sharp or Java. And you can ask us questions about any of those. We have to, as as MongoDB, we have to support them all. So, if you have any questions, <laughs> so, let us know. So, so real quickly, um, 
so when so I did this application in React and I to create the endpoints, I did it in Realm, which is a talk in and of itself. But uh, so Marcus was showing you, but I hosted it on on Realm as well, which is our serverless backend. So I gave Marcus this. This is it hosted on Realm, but this is it running locally. And Nick, <clears throat> Nick's a great guy. Like, no, don't listen to what everybody tells you. <laughs> Do you mean what but you I've, tell people? <laughs> I've done I've done so many of these streams with him and he's always throwing stuff at me. So I'm like oh so I walk around like a like a long tailed cat like all week. Like what is he gonna ask me that I'm definitely not gonna know the answer to? So whenever I fear that's gonna happen, I put in like little impl I implement things so that I don't give him a chance to ask me any hard questions. But on the on Karen, the restaurant Karen loses finder, sleep over this. I do. <laughs> I do. I can't wait for the stream in so I can go back to bed. But, um, but I, I make. But here on the local application, I made a modification. And I'm calling oh. it Bossy Nick, <laughs> and so I could put in. By the way, it's I'm, it's hard coded the endpoint so that um, I can. I'll just. Uh, so I think the endpoint says if I type in like Nicholas or whatever, it doesn't matter. I because I have it hard coded here, but I think I'll show you the the endpoint. So. If you just look for Nick inside of cuisine or inside of uh, <laughs> inside a name, that just so that's my bossy Nick endpoint. So let me show you what that looks like here. Um, so if you go inside of Atlas, so this is Atlas again. If you click Realm, you get to go inside the Realm interface and you can create a Realm application. So I created a Realm application. Uh, I created a Realm application called Restaurant Finder, and in it, I use these third-party services to create, like if I add a service, I use third-party services inside Realm to create these um, HTTP endpoints. So I have a React application that is talking to my data by hitting these endpoints that I created here as well. So Nick likes to use um, uh, Node and Express, but I use this instead of using Node and Express because it's it's easier for me. And now I don't even know how to use Node and Express anymore. No. <laughs> but no. Well, I have to read one of your things. So anyway, this is my Nick endpoint. Well, actually, let's go back. So I'll show you the endpoints I created. I feel honored so, that I have so much stuff named after me. Bossy Nick, NRA boy. I was going to do that. <laughs> but this is like the command that I have for. So this is the aggregation. So you see I have search. What I just showed you inside a compass, I just grabbed it and I just put it in here and this is what it's going to return. So if I go to, um, I still have that thing inside a compass. So uh, let's go back to restaurants. Let's go see if we got Bossy Nick. Um, so if I took, so in this one, you see that I'm like, I'm looking for Nick, the query Nick. Can you see that? I, uh, it's small, but I see it. Okay. You see that I'm looking for Nick, the word Nick inside of cuisine and uh, inside of, if inside of the name, the path that I'm looking for is the name field and the cuisine field. And I have fuzzy and I have uh, this is how I do the geolocation data. Um, so let me see. So what I wanted to do was so you saw the result I had there. Let's see if I if I change it with what I just grabbed from my aggregation just now, if I still have it. About Marcus being in the International Space Station right now. <laughs> Marcus, are you in the space yeah. his location? <laughs> no, I, I'm in the Kennedy Yanko uh, studio in Brooklyn. It's like it's this amazing sculptor that helps me like come up with creative code. So like I consider coding an art form. And building is wow. building art is very similar. So there's this cool piece behind me, and there's that one's going shopping. You see the the shopping write bag the on name, that one. Write the name of the studio in the chat. I want to see. I will. But I'll, I'll, oh, weren't you I'll just mind. in Detroit? You're in yeah, Brooklyn now. Yeah. Yep. I came to pick up some art. So I'm going. I nice. getting some art, bringing it back to my mama. So, but um, also work. You know, also work on on this stream. Stay inspired. <laughs> I'll be back uh, home tonight. Um, I'm going to save this real quick. Hopefully, I didn't break anything. But I could have. Um, so here we have this 
this console so I can test it. Remember, I still have Italian in there. So if I, so you can see I get results in the console. Um, but so that's like the basic endpoint. Obviously, it's not very helpful because query is just for Italian. So I'm going to do, uh, so this is actually reading whatever restaurant I have. So I'm going to call this rest name. And then up here, I'm going to call this, uh, I should have, uh, rest name equals, what is this? I'm just going to copy this. Pillow like create rest name. Um, so I created this here. I changed, I took out Italian. Um, let me go back to the console and then <clears throat> I'm going to change these arguments to be. I'm cold, so I'm a bad typer. That's okay. We have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, rest name, Italian. Let's see if that works. Okay, so it works. I'm going to deploy it. I'm going to, I just, this is just super fun because I, it's so easy. Like I don't have to do Node or like Node or Express or any of that stuff. So I just created everything in the function editor. I can go to settings. So I, when I set it up, I gave it a name. I said it was a get and it gives me an endpoint. It automatically gives me an endpoint. And then I can just test it with Postman or whatever. But Nick, what kind of food do you want to look for? Uh, I'm hot really dogs. into Korean food. No, uh, hot dogs are good, but I'm really into Korean food. <laughs> okay, let's see. Korean. Um, I think I was querying across. I don't. Oh, this doesn't look right. Oh, did I not deploy yet? Deployment was successful. No, no this looks right. Yeah, it looks right. But I don't see Korean. Okay, well, let's look at. The, let's see what. It, so now I think you hard coded something, didn't you? I might have. Let me. I I thought I took it out though. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. See, this is what I had hard coded. The query in path cuisine. The query. Yeah, path is name and cuisine. Right. So I changed it. Name but, should be uh, fine. Rest name. Where are you actually setting rest name? It's part of the payload query rest name. Oh, layer. all right. I see it. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to try it again in case it didn't do what it needed to do it probably might say it like there's i didn't change anything so i don't know what it's talking about <laughs> right now but go back to oh did you hit that review and deploy button last time maybe i did oh no i guess yeah. not that would oh, explain wow. it i thought i did but sometimes i hit cancel because it's right next to it yeah. It's kind of the, it's kind of the story of my life, to tell you the truth. So if I go back to the same point, rest name Korean. So there I have different cuisine, and the name is Korean Lounge. Um, so this is what I see from the endpoint. And if I go here, I'm going to do Bossy Nick, and I'm going to do Korean. Um, and then you, you see go. I have the same results here. So. Um, there is something else super cool that I like a lot about this. If I can just indulge you guys for another little bit. Hold on, I got a question for you, Karen. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no I mean, yeah, uh, great. <laughs> in your endpoint, in your endpoint for Bossy Nick, you've had a, a one mile radius. Yes. Our center point looks kind of far from those restaurants on the far right there. Is it yes. accurately searching? Because it should be. Um, did am I using near in this one? So if I use I near, recall. yeah. So if I use near, so there there, there are options that we have yeah. inside of search for geolocation data. You could use near this near operator, and that says that anything close to where you're looking should should show up first. Although should should get a higher score, it should get a higher contribution. Um, if you have um, if you have geo within. So there's a geo within endpoint, which is kind of a, you could say it's a circle or something like that. Then anything, then it should just block off the data outside of geo within. So you could say, I'm here, give me a mile radius, and then you shouldn't get results for anything outside of that. And the other really cool thing we have is called uh, geo shape. And geo shape, I think, is particularly interesting 
uh, where you could put in like the coordinates of, so for instance, in, if Marcus is in Brooklyn, maybe he only wants to eat in Brooklyn and you know, a Brooklyn isn't a perfect circle. So he can actually put in the latitude and longitude so that he'll know, like when you're writing an application, if you want to make sure that your searches for restaurants only in Manhattan, you should use geo, um, geo shape or something and put in the coordinates for the edges of Manhattan in there and put in the coordinates for the edges of Brooklyn in there. And that's how you can, that's how you do searches in a faceted way to only return results for that. Um, but that, that brings up a good point. And I ha actually haven't tried this. Marcus, maybe you could help me with this. Um, what were our results? So we should have like JFK looks far. That doesn't look right. So let's try. Uh, Nick, you know how I hate live coding, but I'll give it a go. If we try, Marcus, would I put in, if I want to do this boost modifier here, do I do I do that here? Let me see what it was. So you can, but I would recommend, can we start by filtering? Getting rid of, sh 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 like instead of should, uh, filter. Will that work? Yeah, but uh, but oh, I would. You, you still want, you want it to influence the score. You don't want it to restrict the result set. So in that in that case, yeah, you can you can add a score actually, modifier. A, actually, let's go. Uh, let's do a different one that makes. I I think it's it makes a little more sense. Um, and I and I already have the aggregation in here, so I don't have to worry too much. Uh, let's do. Mm, I think this might be it. Okay, so here we do. I see. I already. So this is the score modifier, by the way. But in the last thing that I showed you, so I don't have. I took out all the GeoJSON data in this command, for instance, because I wanted to just kind of make it simple. But in the last command, I had the path. So I had the query was rest name. And the path was name or cuisine. But let's say that I want to do Korean, but I want to make sure that it's cuisine and not something necessarily in the title or vice versa. If I want something in the title or not necessarily in cuisine, um, I could do uh, I can do. Um, let's see. Da, 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 I'll do. So, for instance, in this particular query, I have um, that I'm looking for the word Shay. <laughs> which is a French thing, chez moi, whatever. I'm looking for chez inside a name. But if the cuisine is Chinese, I should get uh, a higher. I'm going to take whatever that score is and make it higher. Let's go ahead and take this out real quickly because I want to see. I want you guys to see if it changes. So now the first the first thing is that doesn't see. The first thing is chef's cuisine, whatever. So the first couple are, are that, but let's go ahead and actually learned, I'll put it here. New. I didn't know you could do that. Well, so this is called weighting scores. So for instance, when yeah. you, sometimes you just, some fields should have, like if you have it in the description or you have it in, I have this example that I used where I say, I use a movie database and I kept putting in Godfather and it kept giving me like random movies about Godfathers when I really wanted the Godfather movie. So I would wait it if Godfather showed up in the title field versus the description field, it would score. So I'm going to, yeah. so here we have a uh, King chef here and I'm going to try and say if it shows up in the, in the uh, name field, it should give it a higher score. And you can see here we have, it changed the, the results here. So I can put this inside of my aggregation and I would get that result. The other really interesting thing about, so this is called a score modifier. So play around with that because it makes a huge difference on your application. You could also use the score modifier with the near operation so that the, 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 the restaurants that are closer to your endpoint, if you want to modify those scores, they'll, they, they'll show up much, much higher. But the other interesting thing that's for your applications is you could do a score where I could say if, if Shay is anywhere in the title, instead of using boost, I'm going to say constant. And I'm going to say that's going to be equal to 100. So now everything that comes, oh, I don't know why that isn't working, but <laughs> now it should say, uh, this is probably me, but 
but if you can imagine if you have a sponsored search, for instance, uh, if you say that, you know, you could say uh, if the if we had the path, if it says sponsored or true or something like that, then you can just go ahead and set anything that's sponsored to, to that value. Just doing a, a time check here. We're at the hour mark. Um, we can keep going, though, if you want. It's totally up to you. Um, I could just put this real quickly in the in the in the bossy Nick endpoint. I feel like I should create an endpoint for Marcus, but then I'd have to put it in the front end or whatever. <laughs> so I'm OK. OK, so we'll do. I'll just add this in there and then we should be. Good. So again, I I like this. I can see here inside that I'm going to get the results I want. So let me go ahead and export the language. I'm going to take it in to Node. They actually show up all the same. This is like the aggregation pipelines are always kind of the same. So I'm going to. It just shows formats differently. So I'm going to replace the NIC endpoint with this. I'm going to make it 12. This is where you can set up set up the Let's sure. make it nine. Nick doesn't deserve more than nine. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> so let's make the query. OK, so this is name. I'm going to make the query rest name here. I, I actually didn't want to change the. Um, the. So what kind of food do we want? Let's have you want um, Italian. You really so, like uh, Italian I, food, Karen, don't you? Oh, well, you know, I actually really like French food, but I figured that was a little cliche. <laughs> I actually have the French card a lot. So I'm going to um, I'm going to make it French. But obviously, in my front end, if I were if I were more prepared, I would have had like an option where I could put in French food. Actually, actually, why don't we do this query? Uh, cuisine. And Nick, you might have to help me with this because I keep forgetting how to do this. Cuisine. That looks right. What? And then, well, I'll, I'll show you in a second. So constant cuisine, because I can just hit the endpoint without going to the application. Constant cuisine equals payload query. And don't tell me to destructure because cuisine, because that's just too cool. Uh, and then I want to say if there is no cuisine, why, if if cuisine doesn't exist, can I do it this way, Nick? If cuisine can, doesn't, yeah. if no if no cuisine, then cuisine equals French. You could do it that way if you want, or you could use a ternary operator. Okay, I'll just all right, fancy pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it's constant. I have to make it a let. Let cuisine equals French. So uh, let me save this. Here you want to? Uh, oh, I was going to say you want to learn something new right now, <laughs> but so no. So is, is if you use if you use var, is it ho hoisted to the to the realm uh, scope, like the global realm application scope <laughs> for, for your application? No, you could use you could use var if you want to. Some of my applications use var. I just use let because it's what all the cool kids are using. I mean, you <laughs> so. should use let. You should use let for a specific function, right? So I think it's a good thing. I think it's the right choice. I can't see. This is this is actually because I really am cold. So uh, cuisine. Let's say Chinese. Um. Let me run this. Nick, I think this is the most live coding I've ever done in a stream ever. <laughs> so I know I didn't think I, that was gonna happen. I, I I usually keep stuff off. You're you're breaking me down. Okay, so let me right. go ahead and That's do this. Good. Didn't I uh, like heavily insult you on a previous stream too for your code and now you're back here doing it again? <laughs> so they have this, yes. I remember that, and I know where to put the semicolon. <laughs> but Nick and Adrian, they do these streams where they share a coding play playground, and they both code to it at the same time, and they won't let me in their playground. They won't let me in their sandbox, and I took it personally. So let me grab this endpoint really quick, um, and then and then I'll shut up after this. So I think this is the same endpoint, but uh, so Nick, and then I want to do rest name equals Shay 
and what was it cuisine now the default i had was for the endpoint was if it doesn't cuisine equals chinese <laughs> puppy <laughs> And so my first thing is French and Napoleon, but actually that should it should be Chinese. It's probably taking a while to propagate. But so now if I go to this restaurant thing on my local thing and I pick, like what should I do here? I'm picking Bossy Nick. What's a good name of the? I keep doing Shay, but I want to misspell it. Says. See what happens. Fro yo yo. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to misspell it that much. Yeah, Shamo is a French restaurant here, so I think it's this one. But um, Chez Napoleon. Looks good. Oh, I'm hungry. I always stream at lunchtime. But anyway, so yeah, exactly. So so this is. Remember the default because I can only put in the rest name in this interface. The default was um, French. This one, it seems to have the default French as well. Let me see if I refresh it, if it changes because I tried to override it to be, yeah, I tried to override it to be Chinese, but maybe it's the same thing that's happening. But anyway, that's just the super fun things about search. The other things that are uh, interesting about it, let me close these. The other things that are interesting about it, so we just showed you autocomplete. We showed you fuzzy matching. We showed you how you could do weighted operators. But as uh, as Jonas mentioned, uh, yeah, Jonas, I agree. Node is cool in that one language at a time. Node and Python, I feel like those are what the cool kids are doing. The other thing that, that are really cool is like wildcard. So you could also use a wildcard inside your indexes and do a command where you, um, inside of your search, where you can say, I actually don't know how to spell this restaurant, uh, which which happened often. And I'm like, uh, so it begins with a C and I think it ends in an S. I don't have wildcard in here, but that would allow you to go. Um, if you're like, it begins in a C and it ends in an S somehow, that would allow you to kind of do this. And then you could hit the wildcard endpoint. Like you could say, is there a star inside of this? And then you hit the wildcard endpoint, then it would just return all results that have that. Have that. And this, the star could be anywhere from, I think it could be up to like seven different characters or something like that. But there's all sorts of different, you know, search is one thing, dollar text, dollar regex are one thing. But with the dollar search operator, you really get to, as a developer, it's really exciting because you really get to have all sorts of fine grained control over the type of results that you get back and make a really cool experience for your for your end users to get what they want to out of your application and your data. <laughs> Sorry. Please. I just keep talking. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want uh, the the viewers to know before we call it for this stream? What, what, do really what do you want to do next? What do you want to do next, right? Uh, good question. Um, hold on. Do we have a general answer? Yeah, you could ask a general question, Jonas. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Nickel answer. Oh, <laughs> me? We'll see. It depends on what it is. But yeah, in terms of what's next, I mean, there's a lot of cool features coming out, right, uh, Marcus? I think we discussed uh, the potential of, are we allowed to talk about it yet, or is it still top secret? Yeah, no, it's not, it's not top secret. Like synonyms, right. is that coming? Yeah, yeah seven, synonyms is right down the pipe. It's coming very soon. Function scores will be available pretty soon as well. Uh, I think that'll be available first. And we have some really cool features to show you in terms of how we've built synonyms to make it awesome and how we built function scores to make it the easiest search engine, Atlas search, the easiest search engine to build and highly customize. Awesome. There's there's something that I want to play with. Um, I, now that I brought it up, I have to ask because I've been meaning to play with it for a couple weeks. It's... Um, if I create a GraphQL endpoint, which you can do in Realm, can I use the dollar search operator inside of that? Do you happen to know off the top of your head? If it is an aggregation pipeline, all I, I you know, I haven't used oh, great. GraphQL, so but it, it allows for aggregation pipelines, so it should be fine. Uh, you and uh, Yeah. 
Uh, no, you can answer, Nick. You're better at this than I'm. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Realm, uh, which is what uh, Karen was bouncing around in. Uh, actually, let me share Karen's screen and maybe she can uh, just click around for us. But there is authentication uh, that you can set up uh, for so users. Here, here and... we're, yeah, so here we're in our Realm app. Like this is, uh, you just set up the Realm app. I, I use third-party services, but if you do authentication, yeah. you see we have all these types of different, you have Facebook and Google and uh, API keys and JWG. We also have kind of custom authentication custom function authentication. So it's kind of like bring your own authentication. Yeah. Um, and then click on rules. Bossy this Nick. Is where you would, yep, Bossy Nick. <laughs> um, sample restaurants, let's use this one. Oops, that's not what I want to use. I want to use restaurants. Whoops, well, whatever. Um, if I want to configure the collection here, which you, you don't have any rules already created, Karen? No. It just yeah. depends. Like, All I right. didn't have to create a rule. I didn't have to create a rule sure. to set up an endpoint. But I, I do create rules to set up GraphQL endpoints. So. All right. Um, but so as you see here, we can just say if we want. So the default is, let's say we want read and write on that. But if I want to add additional fields, Nick, walk me through this. I'm. You can create different roles. Um, uh, yeah, you you'd essentially create a um a new rule based on fields so maybe you have an owner id that owner id is uh related to the authentication provider that you set up uh, hit, which could be i hit neighborhood so i want to see what the fields are so the field would be name okay so let me see yeah. if we did name so but i mean when you when you authenticate you get a unique token and that token would be would be stored and you could just set the role based on the field in that way, people who don't have that token can't access those particular document type stuff. I mean, it, it's a little more involved than that, but uh, than my description. But it's more well, or like less the a, gist a of good things. a good example would be if you're in a store, if you're in an e-commerce store, um, and you can see, or or if you're if you're on like you can write if you have your own data, you can you can read and write your own data but other people's data if you see other people's stuff you can only read their stuff or you can't read their stuff or whatever if you're the boss and you can see everybody below you but they can't see above you so these are sort of ways to sort of separate access to your data which is complicated to do if you didn't have rules then you have to write all sorts of kind of conditions and stuff in code but here you just click some buttons in the interface and your application yep. knows what to do I do not want to do this. Well, all right. Uh, if, if, I mean, if there's nothing else, let's uh, call it. Oh, hi, Prime again. Uh, a little late, but that's all right. We'll <laughs> we'll be throwing this on uh, on YouTube right after. Um, <sighs> so no worries. You can catch up on anything you missed. Uh, you uh, can hit us up with any questions. Don't worry. Yep. <laughs> we'll give so. Uh, Marcus, thank you so much for this was a lot of fun to to it's always Marcus just joined earlier this year and we've, we've worked on a few things together. It's always fun um, working with you. And on side of that, it's really fun to follow your life. <laughs> it's in Brooklyn. Karen, I was like in Detroit yeah. yesterday. <laughs> so. Karen is amazing. And I'm so grateful for her, Nick. She moved mountains. I've been like trying to. <laughs> You know, we have so many customers coming on to Atlas Search right now. It's pretty challenging to juggle everything that's going on. So if you I'm didn't excited. say, I didn't know what that was behind you, and I was like, is he? You know, like, is it, well, I really had. I'm like, is he in the laundry room downstairs or whatever? I was just building. So I'm glad you clarified that for me. But but yeah, I'm jealous of your life. <laughs> no. Well, all okay. right. So uh, let's uh, break. See you, everyone. Bye.